Wow. Hello everyone, good evening. I'm very happy to be broadcasting tonight DIY Live, DIY Salvation Live Show. I'm your host, Pastor E. Obele. You are very welcome. Tonight we'll be talking about Divine BFF. Divine BFF. Um, that's the acronym for Best Friends Forever. All right. Now, a best friend forever is someone that loves you unconditionally, in spite of you, and in spite of like, in spite of your past, in spite of who you know you will be in the future. Sometimes we make friends because of the fact that we know that they're going to be someone great in the future. All right. Now we're talking about divine BFF. Bearing in mind what we um, talked about last two weeks, you know, concerning um, grace. All right. In the scriptures, the word grace actually means one of the words that um, we use in defining grace is the dif divine influence upon the heart and its reflection on the outside. All right. So what it means is that you have a friend, divine. BFF Jesus who is working with you he's your best friend but then he his interaction with you is what reflects on the outside and that's what people see as favor you know advantage you know and all these wonderful things that comes you know with grace the the wonderful things that we use in defining grace is actually as a result of the influence of your divine BFF your best friend forever all right, many years ago, I had a, a BFF, a friend like that, um, best friend forever. He was, he is Kenyan, all right? At, th at that time, I just met him and um, nobody introduced us. We just met and we became friends. And um, shortly afterwards, he became like my big brother, you know? It was just everything to me. I could call him in the middle of the night, Joseph would be there. Now, on the um, Joseph had had, um, an accident some years before I had met him and in that accident you know he he had to wear or they, they put an iron iron a piece of iron in his leg all right so he had this stuff in his leg which required that he needed to um, required frequent therapy and not just therapy sessions he also needed um, to work free, work out frequently at the gym at that time in my life, I was a little overweight. Then um, I started, of course, because he was my BFF, he started influencing me, go to the gym, walk out, go to the gym, walk out, go to the gym, walk out. And eventually I gave in, you know, and I went with him to the gym, registered at the gym, you know, with him, and I started working out. And for many people that know me now, you know that uh, working out at the gym is part of my routine. But it was because I had a BFF who influenced me. All right. He influenced me. So therefore, when we're talking about a BFF in, in the person of Jesus, the grace of our Lord Jesus, we're saying that he would work with you. He would influence you. And eventually, all you know the bad characters and the bad habits will fade away. In fact, the word influence is actually... You know the capacity for someone someone has a capacity to have an effect on your character you know so that's what we're saying that you know grace would do that's what jesus would do that your sins are forgiven and that you can't even stop sinning but that the more you work with him he gives you the capacity you know to actually um overcome those challenges um it, teach, it gives you capacity. Basically, it's just capacity. Now, there are some things I'm going to be sharing with you tonight that actually, this is just like the um, the intro, but some things I'm going to be sharing with you tonight, especially in, in, uh, with regards to relationship, that I find very, very interesting. Okay? But I already just shared with you about um, Joseph, my, my BFF. Okay. All right. Now, many times, let me just mention this. Many times, hi, Engineer Prince, thank you so much for watching. Uh, many times, I find that when we're believing God for something and it's taking a while, you know, like just recently I was believing God for something and um, other things that I was believing God for came. 
So I started asking the Lord, and I said, why, why would this one come now? And he, he kept on saying, patient, just calm down a little bit. You know, I didn't really understand what he meant by a little bit patient, you know. But after a while, I understood that the reason why I had to wait a little longer was because I didn't have the capacity to handle that thing at that moment. And what he was doing to me was building me up, you know, in the process of waiting, you know, in while I was having that patience, you know, he was building me up. All right. So then I remember the story of my younger brother when he was quite little, he was in Osri two then, many years ago. And he came back from school one day. He sat down, he was so sad, you know, and he had this, you know, look on his face, you know, as if something something went wrong and I didn't understand what was going on with him. Sorry, I'm trying to set up this page. It went off. Okay. All right. So, my younger brother, he came back from school that particular day. And when he came back, he started, you know, he was sad and he, he was just like this. And I was like, well, what's the matter with you? He was in Osri too at that time. And I asked him, well, what's the matter with you? And he said, I don't know what I'm doing with my life right now. All my friends are married and they have kids, you know. And I, I don't know what I'm doing. And I was just looking at him. I was like, probably here. Of course, he's just in Osri too. So he was uh, maybe like four years old or so. Maybe he had heard someone say that, you know, and then he was just repeating, you know, what they had said. But I was shocked. I was looking at him and I was like, wow. Now, why am I bringing up this story? I'm bringing up this story because of the fact that he didn't have capacity at that time. Is he a full grown man? Absolutely, he's a full grown man. He was a, sorry, he was he a, a, a man like all everything about a man is in him, yes, but he was a child until an appointed time when he grows, you know, and then he becomes a man and then he's able to get married and able to have children. So at that point, he lacked the capacity. But the way he was saying it, he was saying it like, you know, it was a desire, you know. And that's how some of us are sometimes, you know. We have that desire. We want it to happen right now, but we lack the capacity for it, okay. And um, I, I like to use a relationships um, as an ex for example, okay. So let's say there's this lady, she wants to get married. And she has all her list, you know, like um, this unrealistic, you know, list, you know, and she has it. Now, there's nothing wrong with unrealistic list because I believe that they can come to pass God. There's nothing impossible with God now. But then she has this list. Question, is she up to the standard that she has, you know, put, you know, in her list? She has this picture of this man that she wants to get married to. And then she has all this great and awesome things. The question is, is she, will, if that man shows up right now, will he want to marry her? Is she, you know, does she have the capacity to, you know, actually be married to this man? Many times the answer is no. So then the Lord starts working in her, you know, and building, she begins to build capacity. And then, of course, like, you know, through many relationships, but finally she meets the man. And guess what? She doesn't even know when it happened, but she's exactly, you know, the kind of woman that even him, had, he has been dreaming about. That means that she had built capacity up until that, that moment as well. All right. So I found that the reason why the Lord works in us, you know, the reason why Jesus works in us is to help us to build capacity so that we can become our desires we can become our desires very very important so that if if you have a bad habit you can't you're not able to to handle your bad habit I last last week I said ignore 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 the bad habit there's really nothing you can do about it but what do you do you focus and focus and focus on the Lord Jesus the one who is in you and the one who will you know build you up after a while, you find that, wow, you are able to handle it. Capacity has come and you're able to handle the temptation or you're able to handle whatever it is that was your desire. But absolutely, you become, you become your desire, basically. All right. Now, there's something I wanted to, to talk about um, in re regards relationships. Okay. Um, in, in the scriptures, I think in First Peter chapter 3, verse 1 we find a scripture that says um, this is just by the way that says wives be in subjection to your own husbands that if any 
any of the husbands do not obey the word, that means if they are not Christians, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. While they behold a chaste conversation coupled with fear. Now, it came, you know, I was when I was uh, thinking about capacity, I, I was thinking about the fact that I do know that there are people, there are women who are in mar maybe in marriages where the husband is not saved or the husband is sleeping around or doing something nasty, all right? Not just, and it could be vice versa also. Maybe the, the wife is the one doing this now and then the husband, you know, is the one who is saved and all of that. Now, I also found, I found that in times past, you know, the church would tell, you know, the, the woman, you know, you have to just stay, you know, and pray for your husband. And it, it, it really seemed like it was so, so difficult and it seemed as if it was a, a death sentence for the woman. Now, if you're, if, if you're in a, an abusive relationship where the, the man is hitting you, I'm not, I'm not advocating for that. You know, don't get me wrong. I'm just trying to explain some things based on capacity here. Now, um, I found that in such a relationship, this what the scripture is actually saying in First Peter chapter three, one to two, is that there is actually a capacity that a woman can have. You know, she can actually have it when she gets to this point where she can handle a man who is not born again, but eventually he will become born again, and she didn't. She wouldn't even need to preach the word of God to him. That's what the Bible is, is saying. That's how I, I picture it. Now, how did I get to this point of picturing this? I, I thought about women like, you know, like Cleopatra and um, um, there's some women in history, you know, and you find that they either, they were not manipulated per se, but they knew how to handle such great men, you know, so that such men that could have as many women as they wanted decided on their own to stay you know i know that over time they've said that if a, a man is cheating on a woman you know that uh, of course before now the men will say it's the fault of the woman because she probably wasn't doing the right thing she wasn't cooking or she wasn't dressing sexy enough and things like that however there's another side to this you know and of course i don't support men that say that you know, but there's another side to it, and I'm talking to the ladies now. And guys, if you if you don't need to watch this, you know, because like it's something secret I'm sharing with the ladies. Okay, so now if you're in, if you're a lady, I'm, what I'm telling you is that there's actually a higher level, you know, of this thing, which is not even manipulation, but you can actually get a man to do whatever it is that you want, and it's right there in scriptures, First Peter chapter three, one to two. I know some of you would not like, like, oh my goodness, what she say now. <laughs> Okay, it says, why is being subjection to your own husband? And that was subjection, of course, is sub submission. We don't like to hear that word in church. You know, like, no, 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 we don't want to hear. But the truth of the matter is that for a man, you know, the way um, a woman, if, if you, okay, this is how it is. A little boy and a little girl. I have even, like, uh, what's that word now? I've, I've tested um, kids, kids now. You see a little boy and you see a little girl. And you find that the little girl actually operates on love, all right? And you find that the boy operates on respect. These are kids, all right? It's as if there's something innate in a, in a boy or in a man that just demands respect. And when you show them respect, they feel like you love them. That's, that's you know, they feel like you love them. And the same goes for the ladies, you know? We don't really care much about respect. We want the man to to love us, you know, to love us. Whatever he he does for us is is equals to love, you know. Now, if that is the case, if respect is innate in a man and love is innate in a woman, and the scripture says, why is being subjection to your own husbands? So that if any if any of the husbands, you know, they're messing around, you know, they're sleeping around, they do any of those things, it says be, they may also without the word. That means you don't need to go preach to them and tell them, stop sleeping around and stop doing this and stop doing that and all of that. He says, by your own conversation, they will be one. Conversation is like your behavior, your attitude, your attitude of love towards the husband, your atti attitude of love equals to respect, you know. Submission equals to respect equals to love for a man, all right? Okay, so so that's exactly what the scripture, you know, it's, it's talking about. That by your chaste conversation, coupled with fear, that what happens is that you're going to win over, you're going to win over the man, all right? So now I now found that this is actually... Um, it's not something that every woman can do because first you have to understand submission and then you have to get to the point of saying, okay, I understand submission. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the man that this is his 
if I want to use the word love language, of course, although it will be a little bit off. But this is how he, this is how, you know, he, he likes to be loved. That's how you express your love to him by showing him respect. Okay. And if you keep doing this, you know, you find that he also is being wooed. This is like, this is saying that it's talking about fem feminism, having a great power of persuasion. That's what this is all talking about. That a woman, you don't have to, you can't play a man at his game. I'm sure you've heard me say that, you know, several times on, on the radio. That you can't play a man at his own game. But you, you play a man at your own game by being feminine. You know, just be a woman already. Just be a girl already. All right? And do the things that would win his heart instead. So I'm saying that there is a kind of capacity that you can build as a woman that can make your husband or your man stay with you and not need to look outside because you're completely interesting to him you're completely all and i'm talking about that like even an unbeliever you know someone who is not even saved and he could just turn around and he'll be like i have never in my life met an extraordinary woman like you before now that doesn't mean that men shouldn't you know like um work out you know their own stuff you know because if a man has issues with um you know sleeping around and stuff that he's not faithful to his to his partner of course he has a responsibility to build capacity as well and remember when we're talking about building capacity we're talking about your relationship with the holy spirit that you are one with him that he's teaching you and you're growing from there that you take your eyes off of the bad habits take your eyes off of the scene or whatever it is and you put your heart on on him exact on god on jesus focus on him remember when we used the analogy of of peter you know and jesus walking on water and peter says if it's you lord bid me to come and peter just got got down and then he started walking you know as long as his eyes were on the lord as long as he focused on the lord what happened was that he was able to walk on water but the moment he took his eyes off and he started regarding and considering the circumstances and looking at the waves he started sinking all right so you we have to put our eyes on him on jesus build capacity if there is that thing that you are believing god for and you haven't seen it yet the lord is not saying no i don't believe the lord ever says no to your desires but you might just need to build a little more capacity just some more for that relationship just some more for that amount of money in, in fact it works for finances for me as being a minister of the gospel and being a legal pr practitioner i really wanted to work i thought i was going to work part-time and then the other time i would do ministry but the lord said no he wanted me to do full-time ministry and i didn't understand that at first so eventually after you know like a lot of struggle and all of that i decided okay fine lord um, what am I going to do? What would you have me do now? He said, just focus on your work. The reason why I want you, I don't want you to work, is that I want you to depend on me for everything. That means you have to build your faith when it comes to your finances. All right. And for me, I felt in initial, I was like, ah, you know, but I started working on it. And as I did, I found that working without a salary and believing god for everything gave me such freedom because i could decide to do anything maybe any project and i just knew that the money was going to come and i was not going to judge the project by the money in my bank account i was just going to believe god for it and usually all the projects that we set out to do we finish them all right so at that point i knew there was something else that is connected with capacity another thing that's connected with having capacity is having largeness of heart you know, largeness of heart. The Bible talks about Solomon and says that God gave Solomon largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the seashore. Do you understand what that means? It means that every time Solomon saw, let's say, he was doing business, everything he saw was not even in millions, was not in trillions. He was as the sand that is on the seashore, if you can number that. Every time he saw people in terms of, if he was a pastor, for instance, you know, and he saw people in winning souls. He saw them as the sand, as the sea on the seashore. That's how his heart was enlarged. It all begins with that. Once you can believe that for yourself, then you can have it. That's where it all begins. You can have it once you can believe it. That's where it all begins. 
So in capacity building, God really is working with you. And the point of why, I mean, as he's working with you and influencing you, he wants you to be able to see very, very far. Because therein, in that scene, lies your greatness. All right? So I'm just going to close because I don't want the video to be so, so long. But just point over the things that, that we've talked about. And if you have your questions, I'll just scroll through. I think there were some comments, and I'll just, you know, scroll through and see. All right, CCN, hi. Okay, um, thank you, Perry. You said I'm brilliant. Thank you. All right, so, but that's basically what I wanted to share, share with us tonight. That's your best friend forever, BFF. Jesus is in you to build your capacity. And if there's any area of your life that is a little bit, you know, um, like not where you, you want it to be currently, that you just need to allow him to build capacity in you. All right? Good night, everyone. We'll see you again next week. It's Wednesday night, 9 p.m. And we're going to be talking about some things that are even much more, you know, interesting. You could like our page. We're supposed to be broadcasting this from the Our Salvation Live page. And then, but you could still catch up on my page or on YouTube. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.